created he them. Okay? And then it said, God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, subdue it, take authority over it. Now, Satan does not want us to have authority. Now, this is something that he once had. Because you all know, if you read Ezekiel chapter 28 in the Bible, it talks about how Satan, which was named Lucifer, was one of God's most precious angels. He was adorned. He was beautiful. And he was the worship leader. And at one point in time, he had authority over Eden. I don't have time to explain all that because that's real in depth. But at one point in time, he had authority in Eden. Lucifer did. Because he used to walk to and fro through the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And that's what God presented Job to him. But we're not talking about Job right now. We're talking about Satan. Okay, so at one point in time, he had authority in the Garden of Eden. So now, when he got kicked out of heaven and lost his authority, he's roaming around. He knows he cannot operate in this realm without a physical body. It is impossible. So now, he has to find somebody that he can use so that he can regain the authority that he lost when God kicked him out of heaven. Now, the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 26 that God gave the authority to Adam and Eve. It said male and female. He blessed them. Them is more than one. So it wasn't just Adam. Now, so now, you know, there are, uh, she can't go through the train of thought, but, uh, <laughs>
know, people would rather believe a lie than the truth. So he's planting a lie. He says, For God doth know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Yeah. Okay? Verse 6 says, And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make our why to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed big leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now the tree. This is how the enemy gained authority. The enemy first had to plant a seed to get his attention. All right, So he came, he approached her. You notice he didn't approach the man. Because the man was the head of the household. And we know that the Bible says the woman is a weaker vessel. So he didn't approach the head. He came round about and came to the woman. And he approached her. And he planted a seed and told her, you know, God knows. God, you, he told you that, but he didn't really mean that. You know, people are tell us that today. You heard you told me that God can give you. It's okay. What you say, mother? He understands. Boy, he know my heart. You still got to obey God. I don't care what nobody else said. You got to obey what this word said. Amen. And so he got her attention and he planted that seed in her. Okay, now. Let's see where he's going to uh, attack her with the lust of the flesh. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Verse number three. Right. But, which, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Lest you should die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. He told her she's not going to die. So mm -hmm. in other words, he was trying to make God out of life. Amen. He's trying to tell her, you know, you go eat it, ain't nothing going to happen. Yes. See, the thing was, they were in the spirit. They were not aware, aware of the flesh rain. Right. They were spiritually living, right. spiritually yeah. seeing. Y'all do know this is a spiritual world Amen. that we're in. Yes, and we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, right. but this is a spiritual warfare. Right. And so they were spirit beings at the time. And they did not realize or were aware of the fact that they had flesh until they disobeyed God Amen. and fell into sin. And their eyes were open. Amen. Follow me now. And I want y'all to go home after this. Y'all write these scriptures down and study it. So y'all won't stand up here and say, Minister Ingham lied. <laughs> and she don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> I want you to go home and study the word for yourself. I always do that. Amen. Always read the word for yourself. Amen. Amen. So the lie was told and believed the conception of the seed. Now, we see in verse 6 that all the enemy has is the three things. So now, let's look at verse 4. We just look at verse 4. Now, verse 5 says, For does, for does God know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Okay? You shall be as God, and then know it good and evil. All right. All right. Yeah, it is right. Now, verse 6. We're going to see all three of the verse 6. And when the woman saw yeah. that the tree was good for food, her flesh, because you know when you get hungry, that's your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> so when you get hungry, that's your flesh. You want something to eat. Yeah. You're ready to eat when you're hungry. You're ready to feed your flesh. Whether it's food, whether it's drinks, whether it's whatever. When your flesh cries, God for it, you won't feed. So that's the first
subject to call to. So he ain't gonna bring nothing your way that you don't like, that you're not gonna be tempted by. He's always gonna bring things that's gonna tempt you that you are tempted to take part in. So now the eyes see. When we look at our eyes, you smell. When we get ready to eat, you don't smell right. We ain't eating. So it, it appeals to us, okay, to our senses. And then look at look at look at the pride. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. 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 Pride. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that pride comes before destruction and destruction before yeah. the fall. Yeah. And also pride is something that God hates. The Proverbs says. He said he hates pride. So when you you boast and bumped up. Yeah. You think you're better than somebody else. Oh, or you think you know everything. Yeah. Or you're above everybody. Yeah. You're going to look down on somebody. Yeah. Or you think you got it in the other yeah. stuff. Yeah. And you're full of pride. Yeah. You're full of pride. And God hates that. Yeah. So those are the three temptations that he did in the garden that caused Adam and Eve to sin. So they fell for us. You something, this may be an old term, the okie doke. I don't know what y'all are saying now. <laughs> Okay? Now, let's go over to Matthew chapter number 4. Now, all this time, when Adam and Eve fell, God thought he had somebody. So for 42 generations, between the time that Adam fell and between the time that Jesus Christ was born, God tried with man to get somebody yeah. to come into this earth yeah. realm. Yeah. That would be able to live according to his words mm -hmm. and take back the authority that he had given man and dominion in the garden. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. But he had a mission. 
on Jesus and help me come. Now, verse 11. Now, he attempted him three times. It says, then the devil leaves him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, he resisted Satan. What you said, brother, not enough. Amen. 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 But you got to have something on the inside Amen. working that will give you the strength and the power to be able to resist him. Over in Ephesians, it says, submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil, and he shall flee. Which 
in times past where we were not a people, but by now, what? The people of God. So we belong to God. We know who we are. Okay? As a believer. You got that? Now, the second thing. You have to know the power of the believer. So knowing who we are as a believer, that's where the attack of the flesh comes from. That's the first thing. So now we're on number two. Lust of the eyes. Now, we got to know the power of the believer. We got to know that. Luke 10 and 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power. Now it's a red light that we cheat the time. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over, somebody say all. All. Say it again. All. All the power of the enemy. Yeah. And nothing, the Bible says nothing. Nothing. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Get that straight. 
this morning. Sickness comes from the enemy. That's a tool that he used to turn you away from God. To him. Because his whole purpose, his whole goal is that he wants his kingdom to be bigger and better than God. He wants to be God. He wants to be worshipped. That's what this warfare is all about. But he's already a defeated foe. And the reason why he's already a defeated foe, John 12 and 31 says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Thank you, Lord. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now he was lifted up on Calvary. So there ain't too much we can do to lift him, but we can worship and praise him because he already been lifted. He was lifted up on Calvary for your sins and for mine. He came, y'all, and he took all of our sins, all of our imperfections, all of our sicknesses, all, I mean everything that could ever go wrong in our life, he already headed to the cross. So he was already lifted up. And he got up. Say it attacks you, you can say it is written. Yeah. It is written. The doors of the church. 